Okay, let's take a look at data sheets for different components and that will segue us into learning all team designer. Um, so these are a few components that I thought were interesting. And so we're going to take a look at each of these data sheets uh, and just kind of uh, get a general understanding. So this is a header pin. Um, you'll see that typically with a simple part like this, they have all the dimensions. Uh, and imp most importantly, they have the recommended PCB layout. And this is how you would create the pads in Altium in order to uh, make this component. So here I have that example. This is a header pin. And these are each of the pins uh, in the form of a pad on the PCB. And let's take a quick look at the different layers that we're going to be using. So uh, top layer is the actual metal. And this is what the header pin will solder to. The 3D bodies layer is, so if I type 3, uh, you'll see there's a, a 3D render of the header pin so that you can do things like collision detection uh, to make sure that your enclosure will fit and whatnot. I'm going to click 2 to go back. Uh, you have your assembly layer, which is it marks the boundaries, the physical boundaries of the header pin. So in this case, it's a five, uh, five pin header. And so you're going to have 2.54 times 5 plus this extra on the side, which is this uh, 1.07 here. Now, uh, pin 1, there isn't really a pin 1 on a header pin, but pin 1 is signified by this little notch here. Top overlay is your silk screen. The silk is what's printed on the board. So if we go back into 3, you'll see that this white part here is your silk. And top solder, we, we don't really need to think about that too much. Um, the top solder will mark that kind of boundary in between your, your metal pad and the rest of the board to give it some kind of space. Let's take a look at, so connector plug. Now each of these will be a little bit different. So same as a header pin, it gives you all the dimensions. Oftentimes they tell you in uh, multiple. So the, the plug for your battery is actually only going to have two of these, but they replicate it in case it's a, a longer version of that part. Uh, you would just have to know how many, how many pins to accommodate for. Uh, let's take a look at something Let's take a look at this LED. So the LED, you have your the actual setup, which pins pin 4, 1, 2, 3. And this is the physical dimensions. And further down, you should have a footprint. So uh, suggested soldering pad dimensions. Before it was called, uh, uh, I believe, uh, board. What was it called here? Uh, PCB layout. So it could be called PCB layout. It could be uh, soldering pad dimensions. They also call it landing pattern. Uh, you just have to look for the correct one. Uh, just know it's not going to be the same as the physical dimensions of the, the, the pads on the component itself. Like these are going to be much smaller. The pads will be bigger. Um, if you make it the same size as the physical little pads on the device, it's not going to solder correctly because you need some extra space on the sides. Let's take a look at um, something like this. So this is a buck boost converter. It will take an input voltage range from 1.8 to 5.5 and you can adjust what the output will be. Um, it'll boost it up or it'll buck it down. Uh, now, something like this is a little bit more sophisticated, so I'd recommend reading this first page to understand what the component does, what are the limitations, what are the pros and cons. Um, and just like before, this will have your uh, physical dimensions of the component, uh, which is this. And you will also have the 
and here they call it um, board layout. So this is your board layout and you'd use these dimensions given here. Um, personally, I find the center point for each pad using these, these dimensions and I write it down on a piece of paper and then I go into Altium and I just place each of these pads down based on the width and height of each and the center point. Now with something like this, you will also have a application schematic. Um, and this will be used, so in Altium we will create this part. There will be a footprint part to it, which is what we use the landing pattern slash uh, uh, board layout. And then there will be the schematic symbol which connects to that, which we can then drag into some design and add capacitors and uh, other components to that as well. And I'll, let's take a look at that buck boost that I have here. And so you'll see that it looks fairly similar to before. You have your top layer with each of the pads. I've labeled each of the pads to what it is on the physical component. So V out L2, P ground and whatnot. You have your 3D body, which I'm going to tap three. And you'll see that there's a physical 3D part that you can almost even use to um, to check if the, the pins and the pads align. I'm going to type 2. Uh, top assembly, pin 1 is this V out. So this is the pin 1 uh, little dot there. So we have pin 1. And uh, I'll also note that you have this text here which uh, says designator dot designator. And if when you type dot designator, when this is dragged into your schematic and it has say like a capacitor might be C1 or C2, it'll automatically replace this dot designator with the, uh, the designator uh, name. And top overlay, in this case there is none. Uh, we use top overlay to uh, signify where that part touches down. So with something like the header pin, there's a lot of empty space underneath the body, and so we use the top overlay to fill that in so we know where that component sits. Um, in this case, there isn't any space to put any top overlay. It's pretty filled up, so we don't put anything. And let's take a look at one more. Um, let's do this uh, center 9 axis. And this is something we'll be going into more depth with uh, in terms of creating the component from scratch. So again, uh, you'll want to read these kind of like, like a book. Just go through, understand uh, what the component does, what are the input uh, voltage ranges that it operates at is very important. Um, we'll see that this is a three axis gyroscope, accelerometer and a compass and there's certain features that come along with it. So you can adjust, you can program the data rates, the, uh, the range that the sensors operate at. Uh, again, same as with the, the boost buck converter we saw, there's going to be a schematic which says what capacitors need to be connected to what pins for it to operate correctly. Um, your input voltage range, uh, now a component like this where you have a communication bus, in this case it is a, you can do an I2C and I believe you can do SPI as well. Uh, typically we're going to use I2C because you can put multiple sensors on the same bus. And uh, not only will you have the same stuff you've seen with like the header pin and the boost converter, but you will also have a lot of the protocol for communicating uh, with this sensor. Um, it's a long data sheet, so take your time. Uh, look, give it a, a scan and just try to understand the general concepts uh, before you go into too much detail. I'm going to look for stuff like, okay, so uh, let's just take this one command. So this is an I2C command where you can ask the sensor, uh, who am I? So when you ask who am I, it returns uh, its name, essentially, its address. 
So the value for the who am I, it should return uh, the hexadecimal 0xEA. Um, and then you have other stuff like using control registers to set different uh, uh, functionalities, maybe uh, turning on and off features, enabling and disabling the, the FIFO for, for uh, queuing the data. And you can have a lot of just functions like that. Uh, towards the end, we will see, same as before, the package dimensions. This is the physical dimensions of the package. And then all the way down here, same as always, we have our, uh, they call it, I believe, the, the footprint, the QFN footprint. But these are all the dimensions that we will be using to create the, the part in Altium.